when this screen appears, to run a sample, you, choose, you double click on this button. What comes up is the user. Click OK on that. This loading process takes four to five minutes. If this is your first time using this software, um, the button you're going to be pressing is this one here. If you have a look, it's called uh, the Software Wizard. Right there. Now, this is a, a lengthy process whereby you can build an entire HPLC method from scratch. So this is that what we're going to do. Create a sample set method from scratch. We'll press next. You can choose or not you're going to be running standards and samples or just um, samples or just standards. In this case, we will run um, this, this sample set up with standards. So we're going to choose at the start of the sample set. In this, position, in this situation here, you indicate which vial position you're going to be starting from. Um, that's on the tray itself, and we'll just go with the position number one. Next, select the calibration options. Each standard vial contains a different calibration standard or different standard levels are created with uh, different injections. What this means is that you can either, judging by this picture here, put in individual vials with different concentrations of standard, or you can get the actual injector itself to inject different amounts. So we'll go with next. Number of standard vials in each group, um, which is one, because we're going to go with multiple injections of the one vial. Number of levels in each group, so this is the number of injections you're going to take from the one vial. So a nice round figure would be number four. So that's four calibration points um, on our standard. Number of injections per level, so you can, you can say for example I'd like to inject each standard twice, once, three times, but in this case once will be enough. Runtime. This is going to depend very much on what you're expecting the runtime to be. Due to the fact in this case we're going to be dealing with uh, two products we're going to be dealing with caffeine and we're going to be dealing with uracil. I know uracil on this particular column comes out at about 1 minute and 90 seconds and caffeine comes out at about 2.5 or 2 minutes and 50 seconds. So a run time of say 6 minutes will be absolutely ample here. Now pressing the options button it comes up with a little message saying please select the method set. A method set, we're going to actually go create one now, has to do with how the instrument gets set up. To do that we're going to press this button here. As you can see, it's come up with a list of methods that already exist. For the sake of this exercise, we're going to create one from new by pressing this button here. Okay, this 996 PDA, this indicates, this is this option here is for the photodiode array detector. So in here, you can choose the wavelength to start at. If you put in, say for example, 90 here, you'll come up with an error message indicating the range on which this detector is capable of doing. The W600 has to do with the pump. As you can see here, you can select an upper pressure limit. The, a nice general figure is 4000. As you can see, a lower limit is, or in this case we put it zero, um, but you can set that to when you want that. So if the pump exceeds 4000 PSI, it'll stop. If, for example, you put a lower limit in there, say 100 PSI, if it goes below that, it'll stop. Pump mode, isocratic or gradient. For the sake of this exercise, we're going to go with isocratic, meaning it's one pump at one flow rate coming from either one channel or multiple channels. If you've got helium for sparging the solutions, this is where you tick whether or not you're going to be sparging. If you do have helium running, I definitely recommend using it. And the rate is how many mils per minute, say, for example, say 20. So, it's now come up with the option to save the uh, instrument method. We go yes, and it all depends on your personal choice, but we like to call it the date in which the instrument, the, the instrument method was built. So in this case, it's going to be 09, 03, 27. Save. Okay, there's our method we've just built. Now let's go next. Processing method. Processing method is the method in which uh, the results will actually be processed. So, if we're lucky, we'll go. We'll just go and choose a previous one, this one here, and then we'll go and edit it.
So the processing method, so when the chromatography comes out, this is where you have the opportunity to indicate what each peak is um, by its name. So, components, in this case here you can see, this is one that's already been previously built. We've got uracil, its retention time is 2 minutes, caffeine, 3 minutes, aspirin, 4 minutes. This is approximate values um, which can be changed at a later stage during the integration process. Alright, so we're going to leave that as it is. We'll save that as the date, the date we're doing in today, today's date, which is 09, 03, 27. And also, as you can see here, you can put in comments if there's any specific comments you'd like to put regarding this method. Let's go save and close that. We've now got a processing method. A reporting method is the method which, if you were to print your results, this is where you'd build that. Export method, I don't know. Next, define PDA channel. I like to choose ratio plot. And that should be fine. So that's first wavelength, second wavelength, somewhere in the middle there would be fine. Alright, next. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, next. Method name. So once again, as you probably guessed, it's going to be 09, 03, 27. And you can put comments again, comments in there as you wish. Alright, this part here. This is describe standards. So, next, describe your standard bracket. So starting there, which is all fine, uh, we're back to the screen. Okay, next. Here, we're, get, we're, give up, we're given the opportunity to enter in the volume of standard which we would like to enter. Oh, sorry, we'd like to inject. So we're going to go 10 for the first one, 20 for the second one, 30, sorry, 40, and 80. Very good. Okay. Next. Now this is, has to do with the samples. So describe the samples. Number of samples. In this case we're just going to say this one. Number of ejections. Uh, for, for validation reasons we'll make it two to ensure that the chromatography is consistent. Injection volume is going to be 10. And run time is 6 minutes like the rest of them. The method set's the same. Okay, next. This is where you can name the samples, so in this case the standards, we're going to call it standard. With a prefix, this is, enables you to put either a number or a letter at the front of standard. So if, for example, you went, well, look, in all honesty, it's probably not necessary, but if we did put something in there, if we put A, what had happened when it was run again, it had, at the front of this word standard, it had put B, and if it was run again, it would be C. Suffix, on the other hand, is a lot more useful. And here we're going to put one. So when this standard is run more than once, it'll call it number two, three, so on. With sample name, we're just going to call it sample uh, mix, for example. Once again, prefix, if we put something in there, it'll be at the start. With suffix, it's at the end. In this case, we're only running one sample, so we don't need to put in a suffix. Describe next some routine options. So. Run report, run only, run and process. If we run and process, it's going to process it um, as it runs, not really necessary. We haven't put in a reporting procedure, so we certainly won't, don't, won't, don't want to choose run report. We'll just go with run only. This one here, interactive system of suitability, continue on fault. If you have a small fault, I definitely highly recommend saying continue on from the fault. Okay, this is giving us a summary. And I'm very happy with all that we've done so far, so let's go finish. As you can see now, it's already built a method for us. It's indicated the, the standard number here. You see standard number one. If we'd run it more than once, if we'd had two injections, it would have made that a two. And at the end of it, it's put our sample. At this point here, all you've got to do is press the green button. And you've successfully built a method and um, a sample set uh, for HPLC.